Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to talk about part removal from the printer because I finally finalized my set of tools that I use for removing parts from the printer and I want to share that knowledge with you guys. Stay tuned. So there are three tools that I primarily use for removing parts from my 3D printer and these are pretty much the only tools I typically use. Sometimes I'll use the included scrapers when I know the part's not going to be a problem getting off. You know, it's what's handy. I know it's going to be an easy removal. But otherwise, if I think it's going to be something tricky, then I have my three tools that I use for removing parts from the printer. First is the standard pair of nippers that comes with the Creality printers. I like this particular pair of nippers because they open wider. You see how wide they open? While your normal pair of nippers, which I don't have handy right now, they don't open this wide. Okay, I, You need the wider width ones. And the way this would work is this is good for very tiny parts. I just dropped something, I have no idea what it was. Very small parts, like if you're removing something tiny. Like it would even help with something like this, but you don't need it for something like this. Um, something very, very small and you want to get it off. Um, what you do is you lay these cutters on the print bed so they're actually flush with the bed. So they're flat. You can feel they don't wobble anymore because they're flat. And you put it underneath the edge of the print and you give them a little squeeze and they actually go underneath the print. These will usually mar your print a little bit, but this is good for small prints that you want to pop off that are a little delicate. And you do is you just nip it here and you'll hear it go and you'll hear the print, that part of the print pop off. Now these are thick, so you don't want to keep going because unless the part is strong, you might bend the part and damage it. Then you go to another corner and do a little snick. Another corner, do a little snick, and the part will pop off after one, two, or three snicks. Um, if you're worried about damaging the part, you might not want to use these, but they're very, very handy for that. And as long as you keep these flush nippers flat, they won't damage your bed. And now my primary tools beyond that, that's for special cases, is my folding one inch Fat Mac Stanley chisel. There are other ones available. I will provide links to those. Uh, somebody found it. I just ordered a pair, so I'm going to check them out too. But I'm guessing any one inch chisel will work. Warning. This is important. These are deadly. They are dangerous. They are very, very dangerous. This is as sharp as a razor blade. I can open mail with this. It will slice right through my mail. Okay? It is so sharp. And because of its mass, it is so heavy. It will do damage. It will penetrate your skin. I can take this and just do this, and it will cut me. It will bleed, okay? It is razor, razor sharp. If it's not razor sharp, it's not going to work. Do not use a cheap chisel. Use a well-made chisel, okay? Preferably the one inch because they're big and thick and they have mass. Never, ever, ever, under any conditions, you really need to be conscientious with your safety and your PPE when you mess with this kind of stuff because these really will hurt you. I mean... I can't, I'm repeating myself, but I can't express enough how dangerous this is. It would drive me crazy if I told somebody to use one of these and they had to go to the hospital because they cut themselves with it, because you will. If I were to take this and drop it onto my leg, it would cut me, and it would cut me deep, okay? These are extremely dangerous. That's why I like the folding one, because now it's safe. Now I can hit myself all day with this. It'll hurt, but it won't cut me. It won't tear me up. It won't send me to the hospital. So please be careful with this. Now, the problem with removing a print with one of these is that you want to use force, and you don't use force. Well, you do. You don't use excessive force. All right. If your print is cemented to the bed, you use the wrong bed surface, you use the wrong material, or you over squish. Okay, you have to adjust that. Um, watch my CR10 bed leveling basics videos to go over that. Now. If you have to apply enough force to damage your bed, you're doing it wrong. You're applying too much force. Okay. Now, there are exceptions depending on the materials and what you printed, but we're talking standard PLA, ABS, PETG, stuff like that. Now, the problem is the danger zone with using a tool like this is subconsciously natural for you to do. Now, on a bed like this, this is pretty solid, but think Ender 2, Ender 3, I3... Um, non spring steel removable, 
waterproofs uh, smaller printers. If I take this and just start whacking it, the whole bed's going to vibrate and it won't work because what you want is you want the very light impact. What you're going to basically do with this tool is you're going to put the tool down and you're going to go, you're just going to do that, okay? But if the bed wobbles, it's going to absorb the energy instead of using that energy to actually penetrate underneath the model. And just a little bit, not much, not hard. So your natural inclination is going to be to put your hand here to stabilize the bed so that you can do this. And that's when you're going to get screwed. Okay, I'm going to use that word. You're going to have to deal with that word because it is going to screw you or slice you. Okay, this is the most dangerous thing you can do because I don't care how quick you are on your feet. These things move so quick when they give. What's going to happen is you're going to push this underneath. You're going to push a little too hard. The model's going to pop off and this thing is going to slide right into your goddamn hand way faster, way faster than you can ever react. You will never react fast enough. It'll be a hundredth of a second from the time you see that pop to the, you're going to see this model pop and then you're going to see blood coming out of your hand. That's how it works, okay? Don't put your hand over here. Now, you do need to use your hand to stabilize the bed sometimes. Put your hand here. Grab the bed here to stabilize it. Because now if you miss, you hit nothing. No part of your body is over here. Always move this away from your body. I've cut myself several times with this. I've cut myself with knives. You guys have seen the vicious gashes I've gotten by not being careful. Okay? These things are dangerous. That gash came from this. And that was just a tap. I tapped it and it cut me. Just tapped it. And that wasn't even moving your print. That was handling it. You know, I, I I slipped and I went to grab it with this hand. And it just fell down and tapped me and it cut me. These are dangerous. If they're not sharp enough to be dangerous, they're even more dangerous. A dull tool is a dangerous tool. It's even more dangerous than a sharp tool because you're going to have to apply more force. Okay? So you want your tools to be sharp. Now, the cool thing about this chisel, it's so thick that it's completely inflexible with its machine surface, which means I can put this chisel on this bed. This is just a cheap build tack sheet, fake build tack sheet on top of a glass. You know, it's, it's a thin, um, you know, plastic sheet. You see, I, got, I can flex it here. It's just a thin plastic sheet, okay? I can do this all day. And it's not going to destroy the print surface. It'll actually shave some of the print surface off if you're not careful. You do it too long. But it's not going to gouge and dig into the print surface unless you push down. And then it'll gouge in really fast. <laughs> but if you keep your angle of attack low, it's just going to slide across the top of the print surface. Now, if you have an imperfection in the print surface, it might grab that. But I've never had it happen yet. I have the original print surface on two of my Ender 3s, and I have never damaged them yet. And I've done hundreds of prints on these printers. Every day I'm taking two or three prints off of them. I use this exclusively. Okay? So, the third tool I use, this is from Reptor on Amazon. I love this thing. They even took some of my advice. They sharpened this up a little more. Not sharp enough to cut, so it won't cut you. But it's sharper than the way it comes, because this normally comes flat. So I asked them to put a nice little beveled edge on there. It really helps. It's basically a cake icing knife. But they've customized it for 3D printing by putting a nice little bevel on there. The reason this is nice is because it's thin and it's flexible. So when you put it on the print bed, you can push down and it'll flatten itself right against the print bed. Which allows you to get underneath the print. So why is that important? Well, the reason I have not removed this print yet. This is, by the way, the Alpha Wise U20 that I've just got in. And it printed this beautiful vase. It did a very nice job. It's got some salmon skin, but I can fix that. Um, with little prints like this, these are durable. Okay? What you want to do is you want to chisel upside down. Okay, for little tiny parts, like when I remove the, um, the little... I see that I'm holding it while it's open. <laughs> it's a good way to cut yourself. When I went to remove this part here from the printer, I just laid the chisel down normally and just went tap, tap, and the thing popped right off. Okay? But to remove something like this that's going to have a little more bite, you turn the chisel upside down. So you're using the chisel upside down, and you make it flush on the print bed, and you just tap, tap until it gets under the print. Once it gets under that edge of the print, that's such a razor edge, as long as you have it flush, if you have it like this, you're just going to cut right into the side of your print. You really need to make sure that this edge is flush against the printer. 
exactly flush. You'll see and feel it. It'll, it'll, it'll actually rock. When you when you push down, when you rock it up, you'll actually feel it go click, and it's there. And then you'll feel it pivot up when you go too far. So you'll actually feel it rock back and forth, and you'll get a feel for that edge. But all you, and not a lot of force. Use the mass and inertia of the chisel. Literally, I'm going to use two fingers to show you this. Tap, tap, tap. And then once you feel it wedge under the printer, all you do is push down. And you'll hear the printer go as it pops off the print bed every time. Now, I can't do that with this one because this is a vase. So it only has 0.6 millimeters of plastic on the bottom, three layers, and then it's a vase print all the way up, which means there's a single 0.4 millimeter perimeter of plastic connecting the vase with the bottom. And if you damage it, well, number one, it won't be watertight anymore, assuming it is watertight. Uh, this one that I printed on here in Protopasta Candy Apple Red is watertight. No leakage, that'll hold water, okay? So this is where you use both tools, okay? You pick at it until you get your edge. See, there we go. You, you'll see it pop up. Once you get the pop-up stop, if you keep pushing in with this, you're gonna bend the bottom of the print and it's gonna crack the edge. It might pop off, but you might crack the edge. That's where you switch hands. You've already cracked it open, so you've already got a gap. You stick it back under the gap and you pry it up just a little bit. Just enough for you to come in here with this and slide this in. Now I'm in. Put the chisel down. Now I push down to keep this flat. Hear that? Just work it around. When it resists, stop. Don't keep pushing. Try a different angle of attack. See? Keep moving it around. Don't keep pushing through all the way in the middle. You want to keep that all the way flat. And you just keep working it around. And there you go. I have now removed my print. I started with protopasta, but because I was leaving, I didn't want to take a chance of it failing and ruining, you know, $10 worth of filament. So I switched out to the filament that came with it, which actually broke. Interesting. I think that was when I moved the printer. But anyway, you can see, perfect bottom, not damaged. And Holy crap, it's watertight. <laughs> Not 100% sure, but I pressurized it and I didn't feel any leakage. Holy crap, this might actually hold water. <laughs> As you can see, everything comes right off, no problem. You have your skirts left over, you just take this and you slide it around. Once you get it under a part of the skirt, just follow the skirt around. Nice and gently, um, two fingers, see? Nice and gently, follow it around and you'll pop everything off. Your little blind line, pop it right off. But that's it, that's how you use these three tools effectively for print removal and um again this is a stanley fat max but i also have a link because you can't buy this on amazon anymore except from third party sellers it's like 37 dollars. it's my favorite but that's a lot of money it was like i think it was like 22 or 24 when i bought it when it was available on prime shipping um, but there's another company that makes quality tools that somebody suggested to me and they are available on amazon i think it was like 24 dollars or 22.99 it came like 24 with tax worth every penny now if you have a set of chisels you can use those but for my 3d printing i prefer a folding one because now the tool is safe now it can't hurt you i cannot express enough i'm repeating myself i'm being repetitive on purpose this is dangerous this can seriously seriously hurt you please respect it and be careful i don't want you guys getting hurt your natural subconscious inclination is to put your hand on the other side of the printer. You need to treat this like that equipment that they put double buttons on so that you can't put your hand in a dangerous spot. You need to practice and get in the habit. Put your hand on this side of the bed. This is especially true on tiny printers like the Ender 2. The bed will wobble all over the place. You have to grab it in order to get underneath the print. Grab this corner of the print. Grab whatever corner of the print is on the side that you're coming from with the chisel. So your chisel should touch your hand like this, and that should be your reminder. Now, if that's how I do it, I've got my reminder. If I don't feel my chisel touching my hand when I start, that's kind of like my um, subconscious reminder cue, my uh, Pavlov's training. I go, wait a minute, why can't I feel my chisel? All right, I make sure my chisel touches my hand first. Now I know my hand is safe, and then I start working on my print. Once I make my, if it's a small, stiff, stiff print, you can just use this. Pop it under, pry up, print will pop right off. 
big delicate print or just a big print in general, you can't do that. You'll probably break the print. So you just make your gap. And then once you have your gap, you take your Reptor print removal tool. There's probably other people making this too, but Reptor sent me these. So why not promote them? It's a, I think it's only like $8 or something like that. It's super cheap. And then um, you push it flat, slide it underneath the gap you made, and just work it around. Don't try to push it all the way through because you might damage your print. As soon as you feel it resist, you'll feel it. It'll be going in like, and then it'll start resisting. Stop. Go a different angle. Keep working it around. Keep pushing down flat. You don't want to lift up because you might bend the bottom of your print. And keep working it around until you get it off and it'll come right off. As you see, nice large print I removed from the printer without damaging it at all. So there you go. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching my content. My Patreon links are down below. Um, my PayPal links are down below. Affiliate links for where you can buy this. That's how I make my income are down below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. And if you don't mind, tell me why. I'm not going to berate you. I'm not going to attack you, but tell me why. Also, for my viewers, I notice 60% of my viewers are not subscribers. Doesn't bother me much because the subscriber numbers don't really matter as much except for my own personal ego saying, yay, I got that many subscribers. The algorithm really determines how many views you get regardless of subscriber views. But I am curious why you don't subscribe. So if you feel like telling me, go ahead. I don't mind. I would appreciate it if you tell me. And I won't berate you. And I won't say, why aren't you? I don't care about that kind of stuff. But um, if you see something you want me to improve, tell me. That's it. You guys have a wonderful night.